What's up, everybody? Welcome to the 60th episode of Tequila Tuesday, brought to you by Scotty's Little Sales Club and our good friends at Sendoso, our official sending partner, represented by Danny Liu in the house, top left corner of my screen. What's up, Danny? Uh, we're here tonight with Emily Johnson, who is a burnout specialist and coach who's uh, been very open and transparent about her own journey with burnout and is now super passionate about helping people prevent it as well as recognize it up around the bend, on the horizon, that kind of thing. She was a guest not too long ago on the Surf and Sales podcast and really enjoyed uh, her take and listening to her talk. And it's very obvious to her and it probably all of you that I am super burnt out and I'm trying to do too much and all this kind of thing. So she diagnosed me straight away and let, let me hear it. So I thought, well, you know what? Let's bring her on to uh, our Tequila Tuesday event and see if she can't help all of us. So thanks for being here, Emily, and take it away. Thank you for that introduction. It's so, I'm so excited to be here and chat all things burnout, stress management, mental health, mindset, resilience training. Um, I would love to have this event be, you know, like have conversation, feel free to ask me any questions. I was telling Scott earlier that I am in the process of um, releasing a digital product. It should be coming out in the next couple of weeks and um, I'm happy to share a chapter of it today with you if you have any interest in that. No one has seen it before, so it's pretty exclusive. Um, and it'll just touch on, you know, the root cause of burnout, what burnout is, the path to burnout, and kind of some action steps to follow through from that. Um, so if you're interested in that, I think that we should just kind of go from there. Um, but before we do, I would love to invite everyone to check in with themselves on a scale of one to 10. How is everyone feeling? One being calm, centered, grounded, relaxed, 10 being burnt out, stressed, SOS. So feel free to come off chat or put it in the chat, 10 plus, six out of 10, love it. <laughs> nice, Diana. It's crazy how it, you, I always find when I go out, when I go on vacation and come back, how stressed I was before vacation. And it takes like a few days to really feel like lean into that vacation feeling and kind of lower your stress response and get to that rest and relaxation state. I totally can relate, Diana. So awesome to hear that you're at one. Yeah. So most of us are feeling some, some types of stress, normal. Um, yeah, five, that's pretty good, amazing. Well, thank you so much for engaging. It's really important to can constantly check in with yourself, you know, and build that awareness um, and to make sure you are just finding time to feel more present. We're going to get into that today. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions before we dive into this little presentation? Or anything that you'd like me to touch on before I start? All right, amazing. Well, we can go ahead and get to it. Let me just share my screen. Give me a moment here. And additionally, this is a draft of the digital product that's being launched. So bear with me if there's some typos. I wasn't actually planning on presenting this today, but I felt inspired to. So um, yeah, if there's any typos or anything, just bear with me, but I will go ahead and share my screen now. Okay, so the path to burnout. We talked about this on the Surf and Sales podcast, um, but I thought it was really interesting. I know Scott really resonated with what I was saying about this, so I thought it'd be really important to share with this group. So you're probably at this event because you have experienced burnout or you are in a severe burnout state right now. And I'd love to take some time to explain how you got here. So the first phase of burnout is when you are in this really excited phase, you have this mentality, like you could change the world, you're on a mission. You feel very deeply connected to your why. 
whether that's you just started a new job, whether that's you, you know, just got inspired to start your own business, whether that's, you know, you decided to have a child, you're feeling really inspired, like, and I want to take action right now. So that's phase one. And then comes phase two, when you're running on that natural motivation, you're making really great progress, you're it's just super excited to, to be on this journey. And that leads you to phase three, where you're super busy, you start to neglect your health, you're packing your calendar, saying yes to everything, you're lacking boundaries, you're overcommitting yourself, but you keep pushing through because you're just like so motivated to accomplish this goal. And you're very, you're still very connected to your why. And then there comes the next phase, which is your, you're chronically stressed. You are pushing through your struggles. You are probably experiencing some symptoms like, you know, anxiety, chronic stress, maybe some depression, and you're not listening to your body. And so you just keep pushing through. And then eventually that's when you're going to burn out and crash. So that is a little bit of how you even got to uh, the burnout phase. And, you know, during, if you're really resonating with maybe phase one, two, or three, it's really important to remember to connect to your why. Like, why did you start this journey in the first place? why are you putting yourself through these trenches and really connecting to your why on a regular basis is going to help you prevent getting to that crash and burn phase. Additionally to um, just, you know, staying in that phase two of excitement, natural motivation, you're making progress, you're taking aligned action. It all feels really natural for you. And whenever you start to feel like you're overcommitting, you're pushing yourself, you're maybe saying yes to too many things, it's really important to tune into that and set those boundaries, connect to your why, and you know, move forward with the right, um, with that right mindset instead of pushing through, crashing and burning, being mindful of what you're saying yes to, setting those boundaries and connecting to your why. I'm not sure. Should I check the chat or okay, yes, everyone's totally resonating. I love it. You're doing good. Yeah. I really yeah. love, I really love the the phase breakdown. It, it gives it me at least a real clear picture of. The progression and like where I'm at and there's certainly like a oh fuck kind of moment you know mm -hmm. I think you saw that from a couple people in the chat they're like phase three phase four it's like oh shit yeah no totally and I've been in phase four many times phase five I've been there um oh just a little bit I guess a little background about me I was working in corporate for years in an industry that was super demanding and I burnt out. It just wasn't aligning with my core values, my desires, my dreams, um, you know, my soul's purpose. I didn't feel aligned with any of that anymore. So I left corporate, went back to school for nutrition and started nutrition consulting, you know, dove straight into entrepreneurship. And that experience burnt me out really in insanely. I don't know if anyone here is an entrepreneur, but um, with that comes, I mean, the most mental health challenges you could ever imagine. So um, anyway. I'm prone to burnout, as you can see, but I have learned to heal and prevent in holistic and mindful ways. So that's why I'm here. So there's a lot of root causes of burnout. Um, it could be, you know, internal things like putting pressure on yourself, lack of self-worth. A lot of people like to wear being busy or productive as a badge of honor, not being connected to your why, not knowing your priorities, um, you know, having that I can do it all mentality not accepting your current reality, living in the past or the future. These are all internal things that can cause uh, burnout for you. And then external causes would be things like people pleasing, lacking boundaries, financial stress, family stress, work stress, physical stress, like not being well physically. Maybe you're having poor sleep and you're also living much in your masculine. And I'll get into that as well. So these are just some root causes. I mean, a lot of things can cause burnout. But um, hopefully this gives you kind of an idea of how you have got to where you are and we're going to get into how to heal. So some symptoms for burnout can be a wide range. I mean, everyone's different. Not everyone's going to look the same, but mentally that could look like anxiety, depression. You're really fearful of the future. You're irritable. You're annoyed very easily by your loved ones. Like the smallest thing will trigger you. You have low self-esteem. You're constantly feeling scattered, like you can't get organized. You're feeling overwhelmed. You are feeling like you just need to be alone all the time. And also you lack fulfillment. <clears throat> Some physical symptoms could be anywhere from digestion issues, loss of hair, imbalanced hormones, fatigue, exhaustion, weight gain or weight loss. And then of course, if it's really bad, chronic disease like high blood pressure, cancer, autoimmune, 
all those things. And I mentioned masculine energy before, and this is a little bit kind of unconventional, but this is, so I like to really blend spirituality with mental health. I think it goes hand in hand. And this kind of lies in that realm. So when I talk about masculine energy, masculine means you are constantly accomplishing, you're working, you're crossing off your to-do list, you're wearing productivity as a badge of honor, you're solving things, you're giving a lot of energy. Being in your feminine means you're receiving, you're resting, you're creating, you're playing, you're having fun, joy, love. Like, it, do you see how they're kind of opposites? And of course, we need a balance of both. But most people, especially our society, we thrive off of that masculine energy of constantly being busy, working eight hours a day, going to the gym right after work, making dinner right after the gym. And, you know, like you don't have time to rest, to play, to, to relax and give yourself those precious moments that you need for yourself to restore, repair, rest, digest, all those things. Um, so if you are resonating with this, I encourage you to, you know, do you wear being busy as a badge of honor? That would be very much in your masculine energy. So there's things that you can do to lean into that feminine energy, such as scheduling in a five minute walk or just reading a book before bed, just giving yourself moments during the day to rest, relax, just breathe, be mindful, be present, instead of crossing off the next thing, just like constantly being busy. I'm just gonna check the chat, yeah. I love margaritas too. I don't know what this margarita chat is about, but love that. <laughs> ah. one, of, one of our attendees is famous for sipping a margarita every single time. She's Next a, time, she's if I knew that, I would have brought one. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, the so, show is called Tequila Tuesday, so. Well, where, yeah, so where is everyone's tequila? I thought everyone would be like, you know, sipping on something. Okay, amazing. I do have some really nice tequila from Puerto Vallarta. I could, I should have poured a glass. Um, okay, moving on. So this is, okay, so bodyfulness is being aware of your body experiencing conflict. So that would be tuning into what your body is trying to tell you. So tuning into clues and signs it's showing you when you are burnt out. And the body has a lot of intuition. It has a lot of power. So you can help wake up your body just by breathing, by sensing, by moving. And really feeling embodied means giving, um, being kind of like saying, okay, so it's like when you like say something and then you actually embody that. So just embodying that feminine energy, like actually letting yourself rest and relax and play and have fun, um, embodying being fulfilled, like, you know, being genuine, using your intuition, like those are all examples of being um, like experiencing embodiment. And when you're burnt out, you're, you can be listening to your body, like in terms of the clues and the symptoms it's trying to tell you. So if you're constantly having these like anxious thoughts, that's your body trying and your mind trying to tell you something. If you're not sleeping at night, that's your body trying to tell you something. If you're having like a rash on your skin, that's your body trying to tell you something. So it's really important to be in tune with how your body is trying to communicate with you. And that's what we call bodyfulness. So some things you can do to take action are just kind of reflecting. I would encourage you to think, how are you experiencing these symptoms and these signs on your burnout journey? That can be physical, mental, spiritual, emotional. You know, you can take five minutes and write this out, reflect. Um, if anyone feels like chiming in and sharing anything that they're experiencing on their burnout journey, whether that be physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, feel free. I think we all probably would resonate with each other. Um, like for me, I felt when I was really burnt out in my height of my burnout journey, I felt very irritable everything like like my partner leaving dirty dishes in the sink would like make me lose it like and that's you know not a big deal obviously but it was just like I was very sensitive very fragile and that would be an example of um you know that irritable feelings that would be an example of your body trying to tell you something like you're unwell you're not exactly like working on self-compassion that's a really good one yeah so tuning into the physical, the mental, the spiritual, the emotional is really going to help you heal on your burnout journey. But yeah, working on self-compassion is a good one. 
Okay. So now we're gonna get into the nervous system. Does anyone have any questions about what I just chatted about? Any comments, feedback? Does that resonate? Does that make sense? Feel free to either come off screen, say something, or just say it in the chat. Hey, Emily, can I ask a, sorry, will you go ahead? No, go ahead, Terry. Um, Emily, I was just gonna ask a quick question on uh, bodyfulness. And mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could just expand a little bit on that because a lot of times, in my case at least, I feel like I get some of these clues, but then I don't know how to connect it to the right stressor or the right um, thing that I'm doing to create that stress. And so I was wondering if you could expand a little bit on how you um, diagnose yourself to understand what these clues are telling you. Yeah, that's a great question. So what I would say is it really comes down to awareness. So if you have like, let's say, or can I ask you, like, when was the last time you felt triggered by something? Or is there something that, like, you've noticed comes up in your body when XYZ happens? Like, is there anything that you can think of that is impacting you in a way? Like, do you have any intuitional clues? Or, you know, an example would be receiving a text message from your friend that, like, triggers you or something like that, or receiving an email from your boss that, like, makes you feel on edge. Like, is there anything that in your life right now that is that you can kind of connect the dots? Like you can just, you know, do some reflecting um, and see a really good way to do this is to fill out a resentment journal. So what you can do is for seven days, you write down everything that you did that day, whether that's like working, working out, you know, went for a walk, whatever. And um, next to the activity, you can write your resentment level. So like on a scale of one to five, is this, is this feeling resentful for you? Is this feeling like an obligation? And that can maybe help you tune into some symptoms or some clues that your body is trying to tell you. Um, but it can be as simple as just like, do you feel in your gut that this isn't right for you? Or is this um, like, honestly, like whenever you're feeling triggered, that is an amazing point to start. Does that help? Like, do you have any follow-up questions. I hope that resonated and made sense. Yeah, I think it does. I mean, you know, then, then you can start to think about those times throughout the day where you do get kind of triggered. And then you can think about the event that just happened prior to that. Maybe it's a couple of emails from your boss or a certain meeting that's on the calendar or um, really understanding like the pattern that it creates to get to that real stressor point. So yeah, I like that. And just kind of thinking about those and, and even taking the activities and, um, and ranking them is, is a good uh, idea to, to really understand, like, am I doing the things throughout the day that are making me feel good? Are the things that I want to be doing are, you know, helping me along to get to that goal that I have. So yeah, I think it's incredibly helpful. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, of course. I think we had somebody else that was trying to ask a question a couple moments ago. Yeah, yeah, Go I ahead, think, William. Uh, uh, I am forever trying to crack the code on sleep. Um, I'm relatively irritable most of the time anyway. I think that's just a, a bug. Um, uh, so I, do you have any, because um, you hear things, you know, there's a number of hours uh, process. I find that um, I have three kids and I'll get maybe seven or eight hours, which is a lot, but it might not be continuous. Um, for whatever reason. Uh, have you found um, an arc, um, whatever that looks like? And I'm also kind of a night owl too, just, just again, just baking the cake. Um, but in your experience, have you found any sleep patterns that are relatively more successful than others? Or what are your thoughts around that generally? Well, sleep is so important. I mean, I think we all know that. Um, if you're having trouble sleeping, and it's stress related, I would really encourage you to. Oh, I sack have... out. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm under. Okay. I, mean, I, I don't have, I don't know. I'm, I'm snoozing, but when I hit it's a pillow, I'm out. Um, okay. But it's just a matter of like quantity. Like I might not get like a quantity of unbroken hours or whatever, or I might just not get enough because I feel like I've got something to do or whatever. Um, but anyway, was, I was curious what, what you've, um, what your thoughts were around what, what a good like sleep pattern was, good sleep habit was. I honestly think that it, this is 
for you to decide like every body is different right like if you're waking up rested if you're waking up feeling great and you're going to bed you know if you have your kind of rough routine with sleep and you're waking up feeling really good that's a sign that you're getting enough sleep right like are you feeling good tired yeah (laughs) you're tired okay yeah yeah I wake up tired I don't really start to get my steam until you know like 11 or something I mean I'm fine you might not notice it but um but yeah I don't that I wake up refreshed and maybe it's just just not a condition maybe I'm asking too much but that I wake up like with a refreshed thing it really isn't the case so yeah I guess that's 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 what's at issue I would say if you're not waking up feeling refreshed and like you should be waking up obviously within the next like 30 minutes to an hour feeling like pretty alert I would Mm -hmm. say try to go to bed a little bit earlier and try to wind down like avoid screens before bed, have a nighttime routine, like take care of yourself mentally before bed. And that's going to give you much more restful sleep. Um, That's going to like, it's going to calm your nervous system before you go to sleep. Like if you're scrolling Instagram or checking your emails right before bed or checking your finances right before bed, anything like that, that's, Mm -hmm. that's going to like heighten your nervous system. And then you might have like scary dreams. You might just have like a not restful sleep. Um, you know, your subconscious is going to be really active while you're trying to sleep. And so it's really important to give yourself that time before bed to wind down, avoid screens, like decompress, like, you know, have a little self-care moment um, and see if that helps you feeling more rested and and try to get to bed a little bit earlier. I I think getting to bed at like 10, 11, if you're waking up at like seven, I think that's reasonable again every body is different so it's super reasonable yeah i get it yeah. i mean if i were a better person i would totally do that <laughs> been bed before 11 o'clock since you know 1983 uh, but yeah <laughs> but no, it, it sounded advice you know <laughs> i appreciate it yeah and especially yeah. Screen, I'm, I'm really bad about so I, I that that's that's pretty sound advice if i could uh, yeah find my way to make another habit no, that, that sounds good thank you yeah start there start there and see how um how that tiny little habit can maybe can change things for you anybody else with a question at the moment or should emily keep going um i actually do have one question um so i've recently had this experience. Um, so I've never missed my quota at my current company, but, uh, I had like a lot of anxiety even after hitting it. Um, and like the last two months or two weeks been unreasonably anxious and I I have no idea what's causing it. Um, I guess that I I did everything that I was supposed to. And I don't know if anyone else has experienced something like that. Um, I don't know what's going on. I've never had this happen before. So, and I've been in the role for like four or five months, right? Yeah, I think most people can identify with anxiety right now. Um, I mean, absolutely. I think something that has helped me, what you can do to, uh, to, to help your anxiety, is, especially when it comes to sales and quota, is detaching your, the outcome to your worth. So it sounds like you're doing amazing anyway and you're reaching your quota, which is great, but um, you... I want like, do you, if you aren't making quota, if you're like below on numbers, are you feeling really anxious? It's important to detach the outcome to your worth. So a way you can do this is rewiring how you view success. Like you might think success to you is just hitting quota, like making money, having a raise, you know, getting the car, the house, whatever. A lot of people feel that way, but if you can detach those outcomes and those kind of more tangible materialistic things from your self-worth, then that's when the healing starts to happen and you can start to kind of just view life in a different way. And, you know, especially when it comes to hitting quota, that's obviously a lot of pressure, right? So when we can release that pressure of, you know, I'll be happy when I get a, you know, hit my quota, I'll be happy when I get the car, I'll be happy when I get the house, whatever. If you can detach yourself from those outcomes and just view yourself as this healthy, holistic being who's, you know, walking every single day has food in the fridge, like that, those are really big wins, right? Like that's a really amazing place to be. And if you can kind of just view your life in a kind of bigger picture in that sense, like it's not just about the quota that can help alleviate some anxiety as well. Um, So rewiring how you're viewing success is a really important piece. And then additionally, 
when it comes like more specifically on anxiety, you are like, can I ask you, are you having really anxious thoughts? Are you kind of spiraling? Are you um, just kind of talk more about that? Yeah, no, I think the biggest thing is uh, since I, I work, I guess it's like jobs process as opposed to like traditional SaaS. Um, and so I have to make sure things go out by a certain time. We've had some issues with manufacturing and whatnot. And so the jobs are sold, signed and paid for. It's just like executing, but that is out of my control. And like I said, I haven't had anything go wrong or south yet, but it's just, um, like I said, like I've never been anxious at the end of the month. I'm usually pretty good about staying calm and like level-headed. And it's just for whatever reason, last two weeks, like literally talking to my coworker about it, I was like, I don't know what's going on. I am like constantly anxious. And uh, I've been doing all the same things, like my diet's in check, my workout routine is in check, my sleep's in check. So I don't, I don't know exactly what's causing <clears throat> I mean, a few things come to mind for me. Um, coffee, caffeine. If you are you drinking a lot of coffee? Y yes, like three cups. So uh, just experiment. Caffeine is a natural stimulator. So try with one, like reduce your amount to one cup and see if that helps your anxiety because that actually could help. Um, additionally, when you are like having anxiety and like these anxious thoughts, what you can do is remind yourself that just because you're having these anxious thoughts, um, it's really important to accept the thoughts that you're having instead of, can I ask you, like, are you beating yourself up because you are having this anxiety? Are you like, why am I having this anxiety? Like, this sucks. Are you judging yeah. yourself? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's really important to just accept it. Like, I'm having anxiety. And then notice how it feels in your body and just, like, let it pass through you instead of judging yourself and resisting because the more you resist, the bigger it's going to be. So next time you're starting to feel anxious, I really want you to just label, label it. Like I'm having anxiety right now. And this is how it feels in my body. Maybe it's in your chest. Maybe it's in your stomach. Maybe it's in your head. Like maybe you can feel your heart fluttering, just kind of like label what's happening and identify it, accept it, like allow yourself to feel it. That's okay. We're humans. We're going to have these, these intense emotions and that's, that's okay. That's normal and accept it instead of trying to resist it and see what happens for you. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. You know, this is my first time taking myself off mute. So hi, everyone. My name is Alex, but my real name is Alessio. Thank you for sharing. That's, I think most people can resonate with that. Um, but yeah, it's really important to, instead of resisting, accepting. And with that acceptance, it's going to come more peace. Okay, I think we'll move on unless anything, anyone else has anything they'd like to share. I'm loving the dialogue, by the way, it's great. Terry, you wanna bring that up? <clears throat> can I, can I, can I put, pick on you? Are you? Yeah, you know, kind of like wanna throw into the conversation, but also don't wanna talk about it at the same time, so, but. Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, uh, yeah, I'll do, it. I'll do it. I'll do it. So he, he, one thing that I talk about all the time, Emily, is um, to, to Alex's kind of struggle, like, oh, he's got, you know, some new pressures now, all of a sudden he's feeling in his job. One of the things that I've always done is to look back on whatever hellscape that I've been through in my life. And for me, I had a lot of health problems when I was young, spent four years in the hospital. And so Alex, I would tell myself, like, why am I worried about this fucking cold call? Like, what is this person that I don't know? How am I letting them control like my energy, my emotion? Like, you think I care if they say yes or no? You think I care if I set a meeting? You think I care if I close a deal? Nothing will ever be harder than what I've already been through. And so I would draw strength from that. And I turned it into a superpower and I found a way to weaponize it, right? Here's the problem. The problem is, I have convinced myself that no matter what happens, I just have another year forever, infinitely. And Terry and I had this conversation and it's like, is there a line somewhere? How do I find that, that line, Emily? And, and that's the challenge. Like I've almost over indexed perhaps, right? So that's kind of what Terry is getting at in the, in his chat and the conversation that he and I had. Um, yeah. 
Scott, thanks for that. Ahead, I love, ahead, I, 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 yeah, no, thanks for that. I love, I love it. It's the, you know, talking about sleep and kind of the, the anxiety and yet, yeah, do you, can you give yourself permission? Right. I, I had, you know, we had, we were effectively homeless my senior year in high school. Right. And I went to, I went to a private university where I was like the poorest kid on campus. Right. And there was periods of time where I didn't know how I was going to eat, but I, I had to get through school and Scott, same thing. It's like, where you just go, you just keep going where, all this stuff now, it just keeps piling on and you go, wow, well, that was worse. That, that was worse. This is easy. But there's a thousand, there's a thousand hard things. And do you ever, do you ever give yourself permission to, like you said, and like detach and like relax and accept and go, dude, yeah, shit is hard. And it's okay to say that it's hard. And it's okay to like, let yourself just live in that for a minute. And it's, I find that really challenging to do. And most of the time that just gets me at night. I didn't, I felt like I didn't sleep. 10 minutes last night, just tossing and turning um, for a million reasons with the kids. And we just moved and we got new schools and we got some mean, you know, mean girl issues going on with one of my, my, my 13 year old. Like, so it, it just all those things where you just kind of keep your foot on the gas and don't ever let yourself just go, man, it's okay to chill. So thanks for the setup, Scott. Yeah, those are all valid. Those are all really big things that you're going through right now. And you know, I think it's really important to, when you are going through these like hardships in life to acknowledge that they're hard, like admitting it, that's okay. Like it's not, you know, we don't need to be a hero. Like we're not here to, to act all macho and tough. Like everything's okay all the time. I think there's a lot of value in like surrendering and just being like, I'm having a hard time right now and accepting that. And I think that's such a powerful thing to do is think back to a time where you went through something much harder and using that experience to, you know, move forward. Like everything's going to be okay. I went through X, Y, Z trusting everything's going to be okay. Like thinking back to another situation where you were so stressed, so freaked out that something wasn't going to work out. And then it, it always works out. Like, and if it doesn't work out, there's a reason it didn't work out. Right. Like it's really important to uh, to some level, like we just have to kind of trust and surrender. And I, I, that's why I like to merge spirituality and mental health and burnout because it goes hand in hand. Like there's moments when we're, we're struggling so hard that the best thing that you can do is really just trust and that there's a bigger purpose out there. There's um, just like looking out at, in nature, like knowing that there's something so much bigger than us, like whatever, dealing with whatever. And it's important to just remember, like sometimes I like to zoom out of my situation, like and literally visualize myself, like looking at the globe, the world and like visualizing my tiny speck of a self, like in Canada or whatever. And thinking like, okay, like my problems are so tiny right now. Like I'm good. It's all good. And like zooming out to that bigger picture is really, can be really helpful to be like, you know, I can take a breath. It's all good. A million other people are going through things too there's much worse things that could be happening and I'll get through it. I hope that was helpful. <laughs> I kind of just went on a little tangent there, but um, yeah. Okay. So we're going to talk about the nervous system unless anyone wants to talk about something different. It's an open book. Thank you, Salma. I appreciate that. And also, you know, when we are going through these hardships, it's really important to lean on self-care, meditation practices. And it's especially important to be giving yourself more you time during these hardship moments, because if you're just pushing through all the hardship, it's just going to get more stressful. You have to give yourself time to rest, repair, relax, breathe, be present. And that's actually like the anchor. The more you practice that, the more resilience you're going to have. So when you are going through these hardships, it doesn't feel like that big of a deal because you have a mental stability foundation, right? The more you work on your mental health, the more you work and prioritize your, your well-being physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, the more resilience you're going to have, the, the less challenging these hardships are going to feel. Okay, so the nervous system. I don't even know what's in here. <laughs> Let's see. So of course, there's so many stressful things that we can be dealing with, right? Our thoughts can be stressful. Our financial state can be stressful. Um, you know, physical stress can be a thing, like having an autoimmune disorder 
work is stressful, social, family, TV shows can cause you stress. Like there's so many types of stress. And when we're in stress, actually Scott posted this on LinkedIn today. Um, we are, when we're in this chronic state of stress, we're in this like survival mode and we're constantly in this heightened state of stress. And we're not meant to be in this heightened state of stress for long periods of time. It should really only last like, you know, 90 minutes tops and then you'll go back to baseline and you'll feel, you know, your nervous system will regulate itself and it, it's fine. It's like, you know, back in the old days where we're getting chased by a tiger and obviously like our pupils get dilated, our heart starts beating, we're sweating, we have to run from the tiger or whatever. And then within, you know, hours or whatever, we go back to baseline and everything's fine. But in today's society, in today's day, like we're constantly being stimulated by work, screens, the news, social media, family obligations, work obligations, all the things. And we're in that like stressful survival mode constantly. And we're not allowing ourselves to come back to that baseline. And that's when we burn out. So it's really important to prioritize that rest and relaxation time to notice if you're feeling like you're in that survival mode and to um, give yourself those, those moments of present feeling, you know, calm, deep breathing, even if it's like 60 seconds of deep breathing, that can be super beneficial for you. And a lot of us don't even know that we are in this constant state of survival mode. Um, and when we are in this really stressful state, our autom autonomic nervous system, which regulates our digestion, heart rate, blood sugar levels, hormone secretions, it can't function properly. So our organs won't be able to function if we are in a constant state of stress. Adaptogens, big fan. Mushrooms, big fan. Like the um, medicinal, right? Like you can find powdered mushrooms you can put in your coffee. My partner does it every morning. Adaptogens, big fan. Ashwagandha is really good. Um, what else? I'd have to do some more research. I actually went to nutrition school, so I studied adaptogens, but yeah, great for uh, lowering stress levels for sure. So when we're really stressed, we won't be able to, to function and that causes chronic disease, disorders, all the things, right? Which it makes sense. And so it's really important that we make time to make our nervous system into the serotonin parasympathetic state, which is that rest and relaxation state versus the sympathetic state, which is that fight or flight. So it's really important that you are prioritizing parasympathetic exercises. So what you can do is physically, I want you to do this right now. I want you all to open your calendar and I want you to schedule in moments this week for rest and relaxation. It can be a five minute stretch. It can be five minutes of sitting in silence. It can be a walk outside. It can be insight timer meditation that you just throw in your headphones. And if it's in your calendar, you're a lot more likely to do it. A lot of us are professionals. We live and die by our calendar. If it's in the calendar, it's a lot more likely to happen. So I really would encourage all of us to go into the calendar right now and choose a moment this week where you can schedule in some time to bring yourself back to baseline schedule in that rest and relaxation and do something that's going to sound fun for you. Don't just do a meditation because I'm telling you to, like, if you like, if your thing is going for a walk outside, go for a walk outside. If your thing is yoga, do yoga. If your thing is, um, cooking, you know, I find cooking to be very therapeutic, throw that in your calendar, but you need to be prioritizing, putting yourself in that rest and relaxation state. Does that all make sense? Does anyone I got a screenshot. I don't know what it is. I just put it in my calendar. What did says, you put in? It says deep breath. You will close deals again. Yes. I love that. I love it. Breaths. Yeah. Plural. Sorry. Deep breaths. Plural. That is great. A run in the park sounds amazing. When we're in nature, our bodies are in this awe state because there's so much to look at. It's so healing. I always 10 out of 10 recommend anytime I'm starting to feel a little bit triggered or like I'm about to spiral or I'm like feeling really heightened 10 out of 10 times I go outside and I feel 10 times better. Like it's just so simple. 
Yeah, starting the day with the morning walk centers. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Anything to do with nature, sign me up. It's so healing for me. Yes, Michelle. So I'm, I've tried to like add stuff to my calendar, but I found that because I know it's for me and it doesn't, like, I feel like it doesn't really matter perhaps. And that's really what I'm kind of like working through in my mind is like, why mm -hmm. do I push this up? But I have on my calendar, like a lunch break or basically like go outside, but I rarely do it. Even though it's on my calendar, I find that it's easy to like, a uh, stuff gets pushed forward. I'm like, oh, it's just my lunch. I have time. Someone needs me. Oh, I have time. I can fit it right here. Mm -hmm. like, any tips for, for people that have trouble kind of keeping to even stuff on their calendar? <laughs> That's a really good point. And what I would say to you is find something that's going to be exciting for you. Like maybe taking your lunch feels like a chore or maybe going for a walk feels like a chore. You know what I mean? Like what's something that gives you joy that you can throw on your calendar that you can do? I'm asking you. <laughs> I was like oh okay that's something on my calendar I think just like I just like to go outside so I live in the Pacific Northwest and like anytime that there's like just to put like my feet on the grass like feel yeah. the, like the sun on my face like I did that earlier today like just for a few minutes it did feel really good um but it was like a random kind of time where I was like yeah I'm gonna go outside for a little bit so but yeah just like those few little minutes for me is just to kind of just soak in like just touching something like I don't know like mm -hmm. being barefoot because I like to be barefoot anyway but the sun yeah yeah no that's amazing grounding is so healing like absolutely and another thing I would say is viewing those moments like your lunch break the walk getting outside those moments just for you view those moments as a gift that you're giving yourself like you deserve that you work so hard you give your energy to so many people all day all, all week, like family, work, friends, like you're constantly giving yourself to people, right? So mm -hmm. it's really important to give back to yourself. Like, so think of those moments as that's just for you. That's a gift you're giving yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes I'll do things like I joke, it's like a, a, a joke, like um, it's a gift to my future self, like putting some out, like the cat food or whatever the night before. But what I realized just as I was thinking about it, I thought you're going to say it's non-negotiable because everything else on my calendar, like I feel is an obligation and I, I promise to be there and I'm going to be there. But yet like the promises that I make to myself don't feel quite that firm but I think it's kind of like making sure that it is firm and not like moving those around and treating them like it's and it really is important and that it's another person right like if I mm -hmm. somehow like whatever reason like my brain like wants to be like it's okay for other people but not necessarily for myself yeah. um, so I'm kind of wondering if like just really focusing on, on like it has to happen this is not negotiable it's happening yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And what you can do is start really small, you know, like find something that's like you just said, like going outside barefoot. Why don't you do that every day for five minutes? And you can like, that can be the starting point of your new self-care practice. And you'll eventually start to crave those moments of solitude with yourself. And you're actually, I'm going to be like, you know, like for me, I, I have a non-negotiable morning routine every morning. I don't check my phone. I journal, I meditate, I do my thing. And it's like, it feels so good. I wasn't always like that. But now that I've built this habit, it's like my body and my mind starts to crave it. Come three or 4 p.m. I'm like craving alone time. I'm working, right? Like all day and come three or 4 p.m. I'm like scattered. I'm like, I need to go outside. So like, I, I'm curious, like, how do you feel during the day? Like, are you feeling like stable? Are you feeling, um, like, are you, are you feeling like you want that alone time? I'm just curious, like, how does it, does it come up for you that you do need this self-care moments or just curious? Yeah. Well, it comes out to like burnout for me where I just physically, I cannot function. Like I need to go lie down for like a yeah. little bit, like put my, I call it like putting my head between two pillows and seeing what happens. I like rarely fall asleep, but like, I need a little bit of like sensory deprivation and just like not focusing on like anything else for a little bit. So sometimes that could just be for a really short time, but sometimes I might be there for like a couple of hours and that's where it becomes an issue that I'm like, okay, like this is not, I can't do that in the middle of every day. Yeah. Um, and I don't, but like my body would love it. Like, <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, that what I really feel is like that, that need of like, I do feel really overscheduled and all the other things. Um, but I, I think that's an internal, it's like that 
for me, it's like a strong, like inner critic that says like, you need to do more. Like you're not doing mm -hmm. enough, Like you have to do it. Like they're counting on you. You promised, you said all of those things. Uh, instead of being like, okay, like the bell rang, like that Zen, like moment of like, okay, in time you're put down whatever you did and go to the next thing. Like, I'm not very good at that. So mm -hmm. kind of focusing on like how to be more present and then just kind of move on to the next thing is probably something I need to kind of like put some more thought into. Yeah, absolutely. And what you can do too is, um, yeah, just, you know, instead of like, what you just told me that you need hours to like lie down and that's not sustainable. So it's like mm -hmm. giving yourself these little moments of self-care and you time. And I call them energy give, like you're, you're getting energy from these little things that you're doing, you know, being proactive with that and building those habits. Like even if it's like tiny ones throughout the day, that's going to prevent that moment of burnout that you need to go lay down for hours. You know what I mean? And just reminding yourself, mm -hmm. like, this is, I'm a priority. I'm number one in my life. This is my priority, my health, my well being, my mental health. Like, that's my priority. And reminding yourself that, like, every single morning can maybe help you hmm. choosing, choosing the right or ch like prioritizing you time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It does. It reminds me a little bit of like, it's been a, it's been a minute, but I used to do like the, like the miracle morning kind of like idea when I was going through like this really, really hard time in my life, but it's been a while since I've like had the space. Cause I, I feel like it, I don't have the time. Right. But one thing I remember like really appreciate it is like just the affirmations. And maybe it's like, I need to like write some of those affirmations that like taking care of myself is important. Like I'm able to like do better for my role. I'm able to take my take care of my son better. I'm going to be more productive, like whatever the things are that I want to accomplish, like I will be better if I take that time for like to myself to make sure that I'm kind of like taking care of like that whole, like the proverbial putting on your mask first, right? Not mm -hmm. really about, but just like reminding myself, I think that's probably something I need to write on through my five card and tell myself every morning. Yep. Put it on your mirror when you wake up first thing, when you see, or like first, the moment you see, when you wake up, put that affirmation there as a reminder. Mm -hmm. And let me know how that goes for you. Thank you. Okay. If anyone doesn't have anything else to say, I'm honestly loving this conversation. So whatever, whatever works. Okay. So emotional regulation. I love this topic. So a lot of us can be triggered by something and that can look like a text, an email, um, someone cutting you off while you're driving, dishes in the sink, anything can, be, it can trigger someone, right? And it's really important that we're tuning in and we have that mental awareness, self-awareness when we are feeling that instant feeling of triggered, like instead of letting it consume us and then piling on the triggers and the stress and exploding eventually building that awareness to identify oh I was triggered feeling through that moment being present can really help regulate our nervous system help regulate our emotions it'll help us communicate better it'll reduce our stress response significantly and um yeah I mean just being able to pinpoint like oh I'm triggered right now is life-changing when you're burnt out you are extremely irritable, you're exhausted, the smallest things can tick you off. Um, and instead of letting those like negative emotions consume you and build into this big thing, resulting in an emotional hangover that could last days or weeks, you notice, oh, I'm triggered. You work through that quickly. Feelings only last 90 seconds. It doesn't need to be this like big thing. And you recognize it for what it is, you accept it and you move on. So having that emotional regulation piece is really going to help you decrease those spiraling and those mental breakdowns. For me, mental breakdowns were happening regularly. Panic attacks were happening regularly, like almost every single day when I was in my height of my burnout phase. So this for me has helped me significantly with my burnout journey. And when we're in that really chronic state of stress, we are more fragile, we're irritable, we're more sensitive. And these emotional breakdowns are a lot more likely to occur because we're in that really fragile state, right? And these emotional breakdowns could last a couple of days, they could last a couple of weeks. Um, you know, it's, it really depends on the person, but by 
regulating your emotions in that mindful way can change everything. What else is on here. And when we are living on autopilot and we're susceptible to feeling triggered because we're not aware of our emotions, we're not aware of our environment, our feelings, our thoughts, we're letting our subconscious run our life. So these are all great examples of living on autopilot when you're not tuning into your wants, your needs, your desires, when you're not aware of your feelings, your thoughts, your emotions, when you don't have that conscious awareness. Yeah, it's very dangerous. You're living on autopilot. Can I, might... can I ask a question about your fourth bullet point right there? Yeah. Doing something because you think it's the right thing to do equals living on autopilot. Can you elaborate on that? Yes. So to me, this means like going through life's notions without actually tuning into your true desires, your true wants. Exa like, I, like a perfect example would be someone who, you know, grows up in a small town. Um, and I'm not saying for everyone who does this, it's the wrong thing. I'm not saying that they're always living on autopilot, but this is what comes to mind for me. They, they think because they grew up in a certain environment, you know, they need to get married. They need to have the kids, the, the picket fence, the, the car, the job, like, because that's how our society has conditioned us to believe like that's the best way of living instead of tuning into, is that actually what they want? That is a beautiful life if that's what you want. But some people just go through those notions and they aren't actually aware of, is this right for me? Is this the right path for me? Um, or another example would be like going to college, you know, getting the first job out of college, something like that, because that's what you think you need to do instead of pursuing other passions or exploring other opportunities, right? Like there's so many different paths we could all be taking. But if you're just kind of conditioned in this like tiny little box and not using your imagination and your intuition and dreaming big and exploring, that to me is living on autopilot. Does that make sense? Yeah, so exactly. The stories we adopt from our childhood. Yeah, there's so many different things. Um, yeah, so I think it's really important to tune into your wants, your desires, your needs, asking yourself, like, what are my goals this, this the next six months? Like, what is my passion? Like, what what is going to make me feel fulfilled? A lot of people never have those opportunities to ask themselves that, or no one even asks them that. It's just kind of like, they think it's this one track way, but really there's so many different things that we could be doing and exploring and kind of expanding our mind, if that makes sense. Um, but another example is, you know, being caught in a negative thought pattern that is living on autopilot, constantly criticizing yourself and not even being aware of it. That's living on autopilot, looking in the mirror and feeling like you need to change all these things about you because that's your belief. That's like living on autopilot toxic behaviors and patterns that's living in autopilot. So essentially when you're on autopilot, you're, you're disconnected from your mind, your body and your spirit, excuse the typo. And when we can build that awareness practice, we can catch ourselves in that chronic state of stress. We can catch ourselves in these triggered moments. We can, let these emotions accept, we can let it pass and we can decrease those emotional spirals when we do build that awareness. Having awareness can help you break free from living from autopilot, help you tune into your thoughts, tune into your inner roommate and being conscious of your thoughts, your patterns, your feelings, your emotions and your environment. And so we could talk about, I know we kind of talked about this already, but some action steps would be to reflect on the last time you were triggered and did it cause an emotional breakdown? What was that main trigger point for you? How did you handle that? Or how did you not handle it? Um, do you feel like your emotional breakdown could have been avoided? This is just some reflections that you could do on your own, maybe after this, this um, event, totally up to you. Um, but would encourage you to kind of just reflect and think about the last time you've been triggered. Okay, that there's a little bit more to this, but it's not really 
I'm not I'm, ready to share. I want to. I want to know about the bonus challenge. Can we do the uh, bonus challenge? Let's see. So okay, so this program I'm launching, it's it's going to be like a presentation education format with an aligned workbook um, to take action with what I'm teaching, and it's going to be different. But I think the bonus challenge to build awareness would be for a week, eat every meal without a device in front of you, and just tune into your food, mindfully eat, and like think about the flavors, think about you know the, the process that took to cook this meal, to get the food to the grocery store, where it came from, the farm, whatever, and just like be mindful while you're eating. This is a really great way to build awareness and to not be living on autopilot. I'm guilty of it. So many, so, so many times I'm just like kind of scrolling my phone, eating at the same time, and it's a, it's a habit that I don't want to be in, but that is a great example of just kind of like being on autopilot, like just feeling, cause we're, we're, we're just in that, uh, like we've built this habit of needing to always be stimulated. And anyway, it'd be really great to experience or to build that awareness practice by eating your meals without a TV, a computer, a phone, and just sitting with yourself and your thoughts, or if you're with your family, that would be a beautiful experience, no devices. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what I meant by that. What else is here? I think that's it. Girl, I, I put a question in the chat, Emily, asking people which of those three bullets is the scariest to try to take on. And the answer seems to be, for the most part, um, waking up, avoiding your phone one hour after you wake up seems to be the hardest for people. Oh my gosh, but it's so amazing. I cannot express enough how good and clear you feel when you don't check your phone right when you wake up. It's like, I'm pretty sure Jay Shetty said this, but it's like, would you let a bunch of people walk into your room as soon as your alarm went off? No, absolutely not. You need a moment, right? It's the same thing with your brain and your mind. Like, do you want all these people's opinions and wants and needs? Like, bombarding your mind and your brain right when you wake up when you wake up that's when you're like the most creative it's when you're most clear like it's almost like your mind's a blank slate and so when you're checking your phone or your email or opening your laptop the second you wake up you're just kind of throwing all this stuff at this blank canvas and it's just gonna make you feel scattered so if you have if, if there's one takeaway I would really suggest you trying to not have your phone in front of you after you wake up I think that would be really really healing. Okay, 6 and 7 a.m. Yeah, that's really aggressive. <laughs> so in those days, I would just say maybe night in those days, like maybe the nighttime is for you to like avoid your phone, and give yourself that self-care moment. But yeah, the days that you don't have those 7 and 6 a.m. phone calls, for sure, like you can try it. Yeah. Yeah, eating meals. I use a distraction to over. Yeah, yeah. You could you could tune into just your your hunger levels while you're eating, and just like mindfully eat. And if you're feeling like, um, you know, I'm full, that could be that, that could be like a practice for you. It's just like, am I full, or um, just like being mindful of yeah, how the food is filling you up. Is this enough food for me? I'm um, also like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, any, Salma, any, feel free. Go ahead, Salma. Hey guys, sorry, I was just uh, off camera because I was doing a quick workout before I head out. <laughs> so this is like uh, pretty on point for me. I have a quick question and both Emily and Scott might, you guys both might be helpful for this. Um, I got hired to a position uh, where I connected really well with the VP of sales. Uh, and he's the one who brought me on. He was like building the team. And three weeks ago, uh, he let us know that he's leaving. And <laughs> I am oh, God, so God. stressed out. Like story as old day, as time. Sorry, Scott. A story as old as time. <laughs> And like, honestly, like my work stress has gone up so much since that day. So I'm really happy about this session, to be honest. This is great, great timing. But I don't know, like that lack of control um, or the future thinking of like, 
who's coming in? What are they going to think of my work? Are we going to get along? Is he going to hate me? Is he going to let me go so he can build his own team? Just, I cannot get those thoughts out of my head. And it is actually affecting my outcome at work right now because I'm more stressed out about what the fuck's going to happen than, than just doing my thing. And I, I know that that's like, I, I'm trying to control those thoughts, but it's been difficult. Anyways, I don't know if there was there a question there. I think the question, I guess, is at, on a sales side, Scott, is there something I can just let go of? And then um, I know that there has been a lot of like suggestions on here already on maybe yeah. how I can just let go. Well, of time. I'll try to give a little bit of an answer and then let me get out of the way and let the expert give an answer. But um, you already know this, but you're you're worrying about something you have absolutely no control over whatsoever you don't get a say most likely in who's coming in what their background is or any of that kind of thing all you have control over is your own attitude and your own effort and therefore your own results so you're self-sabotaging a little bit right now you know uh if i'm coming in and i've done this before if i'm coming in as a new vp of sales I don't know anybody. The first thing that I do is I look at, well, what do the numbers tell me? What does people's activity and, and results look like? And that's the first time that I judge somebody for lack of a better word. And then I take the time to get to know people and see what their attitude is like and all that kind of thing. And then the other thing that I would tell you is think through the worst case scenario. Like what's the worst case scenario? So you're stressed and worried about all this. Like, what's the worst possible thing that could happen? You lose your job. Is that the worst thing? I don't know. Maybe there's something worse than that. You lose your job and all of a sudden you can't pay rent and now you're homeless. I don't know what the worst thing is, but I'd walk through like the worst thing that could happen. Because oftentimes it's nowhere near as bad as we kind of make it out to be. And, and there's still a, a, a solution there, you know? Um, it is possible that a new VP comes in and does some kind of housekeeping and, and all that kind of thing. So, but it's also possible that they come in and don't do that at all. And they lean in really hard to the people who are there um, to get this thing going in, in the right direction. And you can be potentially a key contributor there. So it's a huge opportunity to become sort of like my, my lieutenant, for lack of a better term, you know, my go-to person, right? And I'm like, I, I don't I'm trying to figure out what the hell is going on here. Let me ask Selma. She's like my anchor as, my, as I'm the new VP of sales. So there's opportunity there to replicate or even have a better relationship with the new person than the person who just exited, right? So you could spend some time thinking about the opportunities that are presented, not just the downsides. So I'll shut up now and let Emily talk. That was honest. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. I would say that would that was incredible advice. I totally agree. I mean, you're stressing over something you have no idea. Like, I always encourage people to not stress unless they have to, right? Like you don't know, like you're, if you are stressed thinking worst case scenario, that's you knowing the future in a way. And like, you know, that's not, that's just not possible. Like you don't know what's going to happen. So detach, like just reminding yourself that it's all going to work out. Think of a time, like we were talking about earlier that you were dealing with maybe a similar situation or it was stressful time with work and then it all worked out. It always, always works out whether that, whether it's a redirect or whether it's, you know, exactly what you want. You just have to really trust and let go because you actually have no control over the situation. And I love that what Scott said about going over worst, worst, worst case scenario. And, and like, even thinking like, what would I do in this situation? Like thinking of a plan B, if you absolutely had to have a plan B, just like giving yourself that option to relieve the pressure of. I have options, you know, it's, you don't have to, um, 
you know, you can, like, you are the creator of your own life. Like, you don't have to, let's say you don't like this new VP or whatever, you can leave. Like, you can do whatever you want. Like, this is your life. Like, you're not stuck there. And that's, like, worst case scenario that you would want to leave. But, or it could be a beautiful situation. Like, it could be a great opportunity for you. You might get a promotion. Like, you don't know, right? Like, so just um, surrendering to the unknown can be really powerful. And also, I really encourage you to, maybe reflect and journal and like sit with yourself and sit with your thoughts and give yourself that moment of reflection. And what would I do if this didn't work out for me? Do I have any other options? Are there other opportunities I could look for? Um, You know, just it's, I know it seems like the biggest deal ever, but if you zoom out, like I was saying earlier, like zoom, zoom out and like view yourself on a map, like out in outer space and just think like in terms of that way, like you will get through this, whatever the outcome is, you're going to get through it and trying to lean into that unknown piece and kind of surrender. Does that make sense? It does. And honestly, when you said that, I think in the comments, I said, that was really nice to hear. I really (laughs) meant it. (laughs) And I think God's advice around just like lean into help um as they're onboarding the new vp also calm me down because that was like something it can take into action so no perfect thank you guys welcome welcome adriana let's go to you hi emily i was just curious so i'm any tips around the disruption that your body faces once you do a lot of traveling to these conferences? I know most trainers will say carve workout time, but that's almost impossible when sometimes conferences start at 8 a.m. and you're barely yeah. making breakfast and then the nights end with socializing. So just like when you're gone for one week, you might be in another state for a client the next week, but then you're getting back into the routine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think what's really important when you are traveling for work and you are out of your routine is practicing self-compassion with yourself. And if you need to sleep a little bit later and skip your workout because you're just tired, that's okay. And like allowing yourself those moments or if you need to just skip something, if you need to set boundaries and go to the social event for like 20 minutes, dip out, set boundaries. Like you need to do what you need to do. You're mental health and your health is the number one priority here and just check in with yourself like what do I need right now do I have five minutes can I do a quick meditation can I ground myself really quickly you know how can I make this traveling experience a routine for me like how can I make myself feel grounded and settled and complete right now you know what are some things that do you have like any type of routine when you travel or you just kind of like you go with the flow you kind of feel you vibe it out like what is there anything specific that you're looking to improve when you're traveling just curious I think for me just like long flights I think one month I traveled to like six different states and I felt like it took me a month and a half to recover coming back and it's just small things like that I mean maybe it's just like a flight the flight I like dread getting on the plane just for a four-hour flight and I like yeah. reading books. I love reading. Um, I take books with me every time I travel. I find peace in that. Um, I definitely do dip out early on social events because I don't always feel the need to be there. I think uh, in regards to women specifically, we also have ex- other factors that affect us specifically throughout the month. So then it adds another layer. What? Yeah. I I, sorry, Emily. <clears throat> I don't know if you're open to this or, or, or at a place in your life where you might think about this, but it's okay to think about stepping up and saying, this job is no longer right for me because what I'm doing with all this travel is taking a toll on me. So I did that. Uh, if I rewind the tape, I don't know, 12 years or so, I was probably traveling 60 to 75% of the time. I was one week in Austin, one week in San Francisco, one week in LA, one week in New York City on rotation for like three years. This was when I had two kids under two. Not an awesome situation. And oh, by the way, I have autoimmune diseases and cancer in my history. And like, 
you know, you th I think about it now, it's like, what the fuck was I doing, right? But that was what I was doing at the time because I was building something like special. And, and in addition, trying to build my career and all this kind of stuff. But I, I, there was a moment where it hit me and I was like, I don't have to do this. I don't have to be in a VP of sales role that requires me to fly around everywhere. So I would maybe just say, be open to the possibility that there's a role out there for you somewhere in your future, near, medium or long-term, that doesn't require you to travel all over the place like that. I think that's hard for anybody. That's, that's not an Adriana issue. That's a, any human being issue to be in six different states or time zones in one month. Ain't nobody here for that. <laughs> None of us have a great cure for that. Rock stars don't have a great cure for that. Right? I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Any last uh, questions for, for Emily? We got about 10 minutes left if we can squeeze a couple in. I have one. Hi, Emily. Uh, my question for you is a little bit about travel. It's kind of, I'm phenomenal with my schedule in my house. I am really good at that. I figured out like when to take my naps, when to meditate, got it on lock. I'm now in something that I'll travel like once a month, like not as much as Adri, um, but I'm also more in offices. So things like I've been running today for over 12 hours without my normal breaks in that. And then I go back and I'm very good. So I want to try to I don't know, lingo optimize this like week, these moments where I'm not fully in control of my systems like I normally am. Yeah, I think kind of like I brought up with Adri is it's really important to practice self-compassion. Can I ask when you aren't in your routine, are you criticizing? Are you kind of judging yourself? Are you beating yourself up a little bit? Okay, you're, you're like, you're cool with that. I, I love me so much. I would never do that. I love that for you. I love that, Lori. Keep that going. Like that is amazing. Um, but yeah, just find what, you know, find what works for you. And sometimes you just have to surrender and sometimes life is crazy and there's nothing that you, there's not much that you can do. And I think there's a lot of power that can come from allowing yourself to just accept the chaos and surrender to the chaos and finding a few moments to just ground yourself. Like you have a meditation practice. Can you squeeze that in a little bit? Um, can you just like literally, okay, this is a really great tip for everyone. Actually, if you're struggling to feel present and feel that awareness and feel like grounded, I encourage you to have a alarm on your phone called pause and check. And essentially it's, you can do a couple a day, you can do one a day, but essentially it's an alarm that goes off to remind yourself to just tune into how you're feeling. Um, and that can kind of help you feel a little bit more grounded no matter where you are traveling or no matter where you're just like turning into how you're feeling and asking yourself like how am I doing right now is there anything that I can do for myself in this moment have a glass of water go for a walk take 10 deep breaths listen to a podcast like step away from the screen you know and allowing yourself those moments throughout the day when you're having those like really chaotic weeks will probably help you Thank does you. that, does that help at all? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's changed too. Right. So there's the, like, yeah. okay, what do I do with this change? Like I spent a long time optimizing and figuring out my house life. And yeah. now I just signed up for something that is not that anymore. So, you know, we show up for events. We, you know, hard no with TNS and we were all chaos for a few days. That's great. And you come back and you get back to your normal, but mm -hmm. when now not just once a year, it's, you know, monthly, every three weeks. It's like, okay, how do I make sure I can surrender for a little bit, but when I'm thinking every month, you know, or every three weeks, it's like, okay, how much surrender is useful here versus we've got to find a new system. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if this is a new thing for you, then it might just take some adjusting and it might just take some the fact that you're aware of this and the fact that you're aware, like, this is crazy. That's good. Like that's the first piece of the journey, right? It's like having that awareness, recognizing this is a lot for me right now, accepting that and, you know, seeing, seeing how it goes, surrendering to the chaos, 
And also, you know, taking aligned action as you move throughout this role, seeing what works for you. It might take, you might get into a routine now that this is the new thing for you, right? Like you might actually get used to it and you might build a routine. Ultimate or alternatively, what Scott was saying is that if this is really taking a toll on your body, you know, allowing yourself to question like maybe is something better for me out there that's going to support my well-being a little bit better than what I want, right? Like, you know, allowing yourself to explore that. It could be an option as well. Thanks. Hey, any final thoughts that you want to leave us with, Emily, while we wrap up? I just, I'm just, that was amazing. That was so cool to share that, um, that presentation with you. Thank you so much, Scott, for, for having me. And, you know, I really hope a lot of this hit home for you. I really hope that this was, this resonated for you and there were some good tangible takeaways. Um, if you do need to send me a message, I'm here for you. You can find me on LinkedIn. Would love to connect further um, and support you in any way that I can. Um, but yeah, I guess some final thoughts would be just to, I think awareness is the biggest piece of that healing journey and building that awareness and that acceptance piece is going to help you transform your life, prevent burnout, heal from burnout, and really step into that next best version of you. All right. Thanks everybody for spending some time with us. And thanks Emily for helping us out. I'll shoot the recording out everybody and we'll see you next time on Tequila Tuesday. Bye everybody. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, Emily. Thanks, Scott. A great